Hey everyone, today we're going to look at configuring DDNS on Exponology. So this process will work on Exponology devices or Synology devices, but keep in mind that Synology gives you a Synology.me domain. So basically that means that you'll be able to utilize that instead of DuckDNS, which is what we'll be using today. Neither one of them will be better than the other, but the Synology.me is a little easier to set up. Not that the DuckDNS is particularly hard, but it's just an additional step. Just so you know, I included written instructions in the description, and uh, if you like the content, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. So before we get started, we're just quickly going to take a look at what DDNS is. And DDNS is short for Dynamic Domain Name Service. So what that basically means is that when your ISP assigns you an IP address, that IP address is either static or dynamic. Now, static IP addresses don't change. That means whenever you use that IP address, you'll always be connecting to your home. Uh, dynamic IP addresses pretty much change on a regular basis. So that could be daily, that could be hourly, that could be weekly. It's not really you know, a perfect science as far as that goes, but a DDNS host name will pretty much give you the flexibility to know that every time you're connecting to that host name, you will always be connecting to your external IP address, whether it changes or it doesn't. So to get started with the tutorial, the first thing we're going to have to do is head over to the DuckDNS website. And at that point, you'll have to sign in. So there's a few different options. I think there's Reddit, there's Google, there's a few, few different ways that you can sign in. Uh, but as soon as you sign in, you'll see that you can add a subdomain. And a subdomain is pretty much the host name that you're going to connect to. So it's going to be your subdomain.duckdns.org. Uh, and as soon as you create that, you're going to see your external IP address that's going to be listed directly next to that subdomain. Uh, so at this point, you know that every time you're pointing to that uh, host name, that DDNS host name, you'll be connecting to your external IP address. So at this stage, the DuckDNS setup is actually complete. And uh, you can head over to your Exponology, go to Control Panel and External Access. And at that point, we're going to have to configure DuckDNS. So earlier I mentioned that if you have a Synology, you can actually use a Synology.me host name. But since we aren't using Synology, we actually have to configure DuckDNS. So there's a bunch of different options that you can use. You don't necessarily have to use DuckDNS. We're just using it in this case. Uh, but since DuckDNS isn't a default provider, we have to actually configure DuckDNS as a DDNS provider. Uh, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to click Customize type DuckDNS as the service provider, and then we're going to copy and paste in the query URL from the written instructions. After that, you should be able to save, and then we can move on to the next step. So at this point, DuckDNS is set up as a service provider. So we pretty much have to enable DDNS at this point. So to do that, you will select Add, you'll select DuckDNS as the service provider, and then you're gonna to need to enter the host name, which is the subdomain that we entered earlier, .duckdns.org. Uh, and you'll have to go back to the uh, DuckDNS web page and actually copy that token at the top and paste that in as the, uh, as the password. At that point, you can then test the connection, and as long as it returns normal, you can save that. So at this point, DDNS is actually completely configured. Uh, and from here, you can kind of do whatever you want with it. So I'm just going to give you a few different examples of what it could be used for. Uh, and then you can kind of go from there and, and use it how you need. So to me, the biggest and probably best way to utilize this is to actually utilize it for a VPN. So it's never a good idea to actually expose your, uh, your Synology NAS or your Exponology server uh, to the internet by opening ports. Um, it's, it's just generally not recommended. But what you can do is you can set up a VPN and you can open the VPN port. And at that point, you can VPN back into your house, which is pretty much uh, your home network. And when you're on the VPN, you'll actually be able to connect to your Synology. You'll be able to access your files. You'll be able to kind of do everything that you need. But with that said, there are many other things that you can do. Um, and if you wanted to, if you did want to open up uh, ports to the to the internet and you wanted to connect to your NAS from the outside, you would be able to open up the uh, the Synology NAS's port. Uh, the the default port is 5000, 5001 if it's HTTPS. Uh, and at that point, you'll be able to use that DDNS host name and then your port uh, and you'll actually be able to connect to that from the outside. Now, that's assuming that the Synology doesn't have a firewall set up uh, and you know you have 
no rules in between that is stopping that traffic. Uh, but if the port is open, you should be able to connect to it. Uh, so once again, that's not recommended, but it is you know just an example of what you could do with this. So that will conclude this tutorial. Uh, I want to thank you for watching if you made it this far. Uh, and if you like the content, please like the video and subscribe. It really helps me out uh, and I appreciate it. Thank you.